At the end of last year, Front End um, decided to work on a, a, a social needs project. And the idea was to have a conceptual project uh, and to engage students. And so because of the, the, the situation, the ongoing situation that was happening in, in Europe last year, we decided to focus on, on the topic of migration. We felt that it was pretty fitting at the time um, and still, uh, still is very relevant um, right now. Um, the real reason we engaged with this project was to engage with students. Um, so Front End has been advocating for UX since 1998, and during that time we've been lobbying colleges to really get on board with design, design thinking, user-centered design, human-centered design, and so now we're seeing the fruits of that work. Design colleges are starting to embrace UX, uh, traditional colleges are embracing UX, and so uh, this project um, was really a response uh, to, that, um, to that happening. So we started by exploring the landscape. We engaged with NGOs across Europe. And while they had um, great needs and they were eager to engage with designers, the projects they were bringing to us weren't, um, weren't ones we could really add much value to. And at the same time, it wasn't really a suitable fit for for students coming in. So we knew we needed to operate at a more strategic level, and so we engaged the IOM. Uh, the IOM is the World Body for Migration, uh, the International Organization for Migration, and they are responsible for uh, looking at a macro level in terms of policy. Uh, they are an intergovernmental organization, which means that taxpayers from all over the world help fund the I IOM. But at the same time, they also uh, work on a, mac on a micro level, they um, coordinate responses on the ground. And so they were the perfect partner for this collaboration. Um, to kick off, they, they provided us with a ton of research and resources, far too much research and resources than we, uh, than we could really get our hands around. But um, then they exposed us to their health team. Um, because Front End has a, has a long history of, of health projects and healthcare, they, they asked us to help the health team and to engage with that uh, specific section. And together we developed a, a student boot camp. And this was uh, a huge, huge uh, task for front end, something brand new in our, in our process. Um, so essentially we had, we had 10 students uh, for, who came to our offices for three days uh, across 30 hours that were gonna work on a number of different teams. Um, and while the IOM have a very broad uh, remit, the actual, we decided for, this, for the sake of simplicity to focus on a single instance. So we focused on the European crisis. And we decided to focus our efforts on a physical item. Uh, in this case, it was a health pack, which uh, the IOM had been trying to, to get across the line. They, they, had, they have health packs they, they send out across um, different, uh, different missions in the world, and usually the missions are quite similar, and so the health packs can be quite similar. But in the European context, the health packs weren't suitable. It was full of medicines, uh, but what, what was happening in Europe was that they were meeting migrants at you know, possibly the first, first protocol, and migrants were moving, and so they can't carry with them heavy, heavy medicines. And so that was kind of the, the first item that they were looking around. Now, the, the response was phenomenal. We actually had applicants from across, uh, obviously, Europe, but um, we had applicants from North America, South America, uh, India, China, um, and the boot camp, we, had, we brought students in, we housed them in Dublin, um, and we had an absolutely blast. Uh, it was a lot of work, but I think we had a lot of fun. A lot of students are here today in the audience, and the experience was, was great, not just for them, uh, from reports, um, but for, for the front-end team ourselves. And what's more, the ideas that came out of that boot camp, actually many of them ended up, uh, were incorporated into the, the end designs. So, um, and this is a, a take of the, uh, the health pack uh, version one. But um, after the boot camp, actually, things got very interesting because the engagement with the IOM changed a little bit because we started seeing how the concepts were going to be implemented. Um, and what's funny here is that the IOM they may not know UX, but they definitely know Lean. Um, we, were there in, we were at their offices in Geneva not too long ago for a workshop, and it was one of the hottest days of the year, 
and they have zero air conditioning. So we spent a couple of hours there absolutely dripping, sweating. And God bless these men every day walking in their suits. I don't know how they do it, but fair play to them. But everything they do, though, they do it in a very lean method. Um, they, they, they know they're working with taxpayers' dollars, and they, they don't waste them at any stage, uh, not even on air conditioning for their staff. But when they're providing services, they, 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 never, they have to really respond um, by, by implementing kind of the cheapest, quickest solution um, and get active on the ground right away. And they have no bandwidth or capacity for, for problem solving. And so designers, we actually forget the luxury we have of being able to take three hours to explore a concept and then rubbish it and say, meh, I'm going to move the other way. Um, that's not something the IOM have, have, have been privy to before. And so this collaboration was actually challenging their um, ideas in terms of how they should really look at, at uh, service provision and how they should really look at problem solving within the organization. Um, the future vision that we're going to present in a moment uh, in a video is, is actually presented as a unified concept, but in reality, when the IOM are looking now to, to advance them, they're actually kind of breaking them into to different sections, and they'll be implemented in, in different ways uh, uh, and at different levels and with different kind of teams involved. Um, but what was interesting is that we got to explore healthcare from a completely different viewpoint than the way they usually do, and we incorporated more people than they usually would, and, and the outcomes that we have are actually quite different to the outcomes that they have um, been looking at so far, especially in terms of, of the technical, technological uh, exports. Uh, they're looking at kind of a, a framework um, for migration, which we're going to be um, adding a lot of our thinkings into, and we'll show you our thinkings now. But, um, but it's interesting to see how when you engage different types of, of users, not just the migrants, but also the, the IOM and other agencies, how you can kind of concept different um, ideas to where they were at and how you can add to um, what they were looking for. Um, one other thing that came out of the, the collaboration was uh, that we learned that patients received other medicines without any information. Um, and this adds to anxieties and it adds to uncertainties and it adds to stress. Um, and so what we looked at doing was creating a graphic-based label where we could provide as much information as possible to migrants um, who may have literacy or language issues. Uh, and this concept, this basic, basic concept, which is quite obvious, um, actually was really impressed the IOM. Um, so much so that they've asked us to kind of develop this idea a little bit further. And they're looking to bring this forward to the uh, World Health Organization's Global Health Cluster, where basically all the emergency, uh, all the emergency healthcare providers come together to agree standards and practices. And so what started out as a, as a conceptual collaboration for students ends up possibly creating a huge change. Um, and that's quite powerful to me. I think it should be quite powerful to designers in general that what started out really focusing on, on ourselves uh, by bringing our design thinking and our user-centered and human-centered design to an organization uh, like the IOM that does never engage with it, never thought about it, we actually see the power to, the potential to create real um, impactful and hopefully lasting change. And so with that, I'm going to introduce you to uh, the future vision of migrant healthcare, which is the uh, collaboration between front end and uh, IOM. And hopefully this plays in sound. Civil war, poverty and terrorism are tearing communities apart worldwide. 65 million people are now displaced globally. This is the highest since World War II. Last year, the International Organization for Migration actually attended the needs of 5.2 million people. Even though access to healthcare is a basic human right, because the growing numbers of migrants and refugees is becoming increasingly difficult to provide that healthcare on the ground. Realising the pressure that IOM were under, Front End volunteered to conceptualise a future vision for migrant healthcare. Earlier this year we approached the top design colleges and what we wanted to do was to conceptualise ideas and come up with solutions for the challenges that the IOM were facing. We had a phenomenal response. So we had applicants from all over the world who wanted to come to Front End and, and get engaged with this you know, social needs project. Research is huge. It's very, very important for informing design. Without it, you're designing in a vacuum. 
Kamal, who was a refugee who had recently completed the journey, spoke to us and the students to help us in the project. If we think these people is like Irish people, I, we, we cannot say like this. They are they so many different, they, have, they don't have information, they don't have knowledge of language, they don't know what they have to do. Well, it was a great experience to, to actually meet and hear his story. It really puts things in perspective for when you're creating this kind of stuff. It's one thing to, yeah, to read about it, but when you have a person you can actually just picture in your head, it changes just from an international problem to kind of a human problem. Empathy is a big thing in, in the design process. It's what's their current situation and what makes them want to use it. So the research part is the start of the, the kind of discovery, the journey. One of the main issues that we've come across is that a migrant might arrive and get tested um, for an illness of some sort, uh, but not be around long enough to get the results. The students explored a whole range of ideas and what we did is we took the team here at Front End and we worked with the IOM to develop those ideas and to see what was practical. There was a very clear need for a holistic solution and end-to-end -end service design. So this was the way in which we approached the project. A lot of what you see is almost like last month's problem, and it's changing all the time. So some of the things that we were thinking about, oh yeah, these people are in transit and they're going through train stations, and they're not anymore. That's all stopped. And so the problem that we have right now is different from the problem when we planned the project, and it will probably be different in, in, a, in a month's time as well. Fundamentally, there is a duty to provide the same level of care to people, whether they're in camps or they're in transit. Providing that continuity of care, though, that is a real challenge. As patients move around, they, they, their healthcare records often get duplicated. So we looked at a cloud-based solution that would allow you to store their records electronically. As they move to a new station, they could access their records and their test results in their own language, and hopefully this would encourage ill patients to, to get the tests in the first place. We could use remote video calling to provide healthcare directly to people on the ground. It would be good to get healthcare in your own language from a native or someone close to where you're from, but also it would allow those healthcare professionals who are often very, very busy, but concerned as well, to, to, to give a service or give something back but without interfering with their jobs. But movement isn't the only challenge. We're seeing people coming from different countries, which means we have different languages, literacy rates, and hugely different cultures. One obvious area that was in need of improvement was medication labelling. Well, typically what happens is there's handwritten labels and they're stuck on Ziploc bags. Obviously this is inconsistent, it can cause confusion, so there was a limited amount of information on the labels in the first place. So what we did was we worked with the IOM and we identified a potential solution for creating a standardised labelling system that aid workers can put onto the Ziploc bags themselves. We looked at important information on medication and we convey that graphically and make sure that more people understood the key messages that were on those labels. Obviously, the medicines didn't go out with leaflets or anything like that, and we knew that a lot of migrants actually had smartphones. So we put information at the bottom that could be easily scanned and that would integrate with an app that would give the migrant or the patient extended information. I think traditionally people see design as being an add-on, something that you put on to the end of the process, um, but really design is about fundamentally thinking things through and making things work. This collaboration has really come in at the opportune time in that we're now able to see how we can continue with providing healthcare to people who need it most. The potential is huge. I would propose certainly once it's ready, actually testing it out and rolling it out as a pilot. We hope that it will help everybody who's dealing with these crises lives much easier, just through greater efficiencies, greater communication, greater understanding amongst all players. Good design and human-centred design can make a huge impact.